Good evening. Welcome to Vibin' with Ashley Live. I'm your host, Ashley Live, and tonight is episode 133. I am so excited to bring back this next guest to my show, the incredible singer, songwriter, pianist, Matt Cusan. This is Matt's second appearance on my show. He was on episode 37, which was January 3rd, 2020, almost a year ago. So a couple quick things about Matt before I bring him in the room. He went to Berklee College of Music. He released his debut album in 2009 to countless awards and rave reviews. He's toured extensively over the past 15 years and in 2019, he toured with Christina Aguilera singing the duet, Say Something. I'm really excited to bring Matt back in the room. Hi, Tigga Man, I see you. Hi guys, happy holidays. It's, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's December 13th. We're halfway through December. So I just wanted to say thank you guys for your continuous support. Continue to support my musicians. There are so many incredible musicians that have graced the stage on my show. Make sure to go back, follow them, like them, put their music on your playlists. Uh, check out my website, ashleylivemusic.com. You can see all my episodes there. Head on over to YouTube, put in Vibin' with Ashley Live. That's the name of my show. And that's where you can check out all of these episodes. So Matt just joined the room. We're going to wait for him to join in, and we're going to get this interview started. <clears throat> Hi, Matt. Hi, how are you? Can you see me, hear me, everything? I can see you, I can hear Great. you. How's it going? Uh, not too bad, how about you? Very well, thanks so much for, for asking. I just, I wanted to say again, Matt, thanks for coming back on the show. You were on my show, episode 37, January 3rd, 2020, which- I can't believe it was that long ago. I know, and yeah. we are almost a year later, um, still in this pandemic, crazy enough. Insane, yep. No, a lot can happen in a year. You have a lot going on. You've toured a lot this year. So I just wanted to catch back up with you, see how you're doing. Of course. And have a fun conversation with you. I'm into it. Thank you so much for asking and having me and teaching me how to do Insta Live again because it's been a minute. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So I want to start at the beginning of your mm -hmm. life. I know your entire upbringing was filled with music. Everybody in your life played music mm -hmm. or you know, taught you music. What did music mean to you during your childhood? It was everything. It was, it, was, it was an immediate bond between me and my mom, who was a piano teacher, me and my dad, who my dad grew up playing music and playing piano and uh, actually directing choirs. So mm -hmm. um, it was an immediate bond, immediate thing. It was that in sports with my dad. Um, and my older brother and sister, who were 10 and 12 years older than me, also just heavy into music. They all played instruments. Um, so it was, it was always the Cusan thing to, 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 you know, music was it. My, my mom would teach piano all day long and my dad would come home and listen to his jazz records. And, um, it was always going on in the house and it was always, you know, they never forced me to like mm -hmm. take piano lessons or take voice lessons. It just kind of happened. And I think that's the best way. I was listening to a Ted talk with uh, Victor Wooten, who is one of the baddest bass players on the planet. His yeah. whole family is incredible, incredible musicians. And he said, you know, they never forced me. I, I just picked up a bass because the fam no one in the family played bass. And now he's one of the best on, in the world. So I think yeah. that's, that's kind of my thing. It, it, it was the piano is always sitting there. I always went over and banged on it to, to make noise. And that, that, that was the start of it, really. Yeah. I think it's so cool that it was just constantly in your house. It was playing constantly. in one room. Your mom mm -hmm. was playing the piano. Your dad was playing the jazz rec records. Yep. Or in choir and it's just really cool was there like this pivotal moment in your childhood where you're like this is what i'm gonna do for the rest of when i found out i'm probably repeating a lot of this from our last conversation but when i found out that the nba was not a reality for me uh, -huh. uh music is uh it's honestly all i ever wanted to do and yeah. all i ever did i i can't do anything else if 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 uh you know the whole music business shuts down one day i would spend my life just playing piano in my bedroom. Like, it's just all I really love and do and, mm -hmm. and want to do. Yeah. And I love that you're so passionate 
Actually, I didn't know that you wanted to do the NBA. That was news to me. Yeah, that's that is. Uh, what's up, Brandon? What's up, Georgia? Sorry, I'm saying hi to people. What's no, up? Uh, we're in here. It's okay. Yeah, Kevin. Everybody's on. Um, uh, yeah, the NBA. So growing up, there was always a basketball hoop in the driveway. My dad was a coach. My brother was six four and played for colleges, a couple different colleges. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I. I played every day of my life for several hours a day, every single day of my life. I was in league since I was five. Okay. Um, I love basketball. I have a game on in the background. I'm not watching it, but it's there just because I need it. I need it to fuel my, my soul. Uh, when music is down, basketball is always there. Yeah, I, it's, it's a passion like music. Yeah. Um, you know, I can't jump as high as I used to and all that stuff. But uh, <laughs> uh, real quick, Brandon Williams, who just joined, genius musician somebody you should interview uh -huh. and we did a couple songs together in the past and we have brandon i think it's two right coming out a song i wrote god 15 years ago that he made brought back to life called gentle breeze and we mm -hmm. did a we did he he did an amazing cover of dion warwick's deja vu that i sang on those are all coming out next year i think brandon if i'm wrong let me know but anyways yes two more there you go <laughs> Uh, so yeah, amazing artist. Uh, I'm stoked. Anytime I work with him, it, it goes amazing. So there, there's that. But yes, NBA was, I don't want to say the first dream. It was always almost a tie with music. I loved it, but I'm only five, nine. I'm not, you know, I'm, I was really good. I was scouted by colleges, but the people don't realize how good these guys are. Like it's, it's insane. We could yeah. talk about basketball for the next hour if you wanted, and I'd be very happy. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I don't. I know, know nothing. I don't know yeah. much about basketball. That's okay. Uh, That's I okay. Talk about it. I just like. I think I'll teach you all about it. You would just be teaching me about it the entire time. <laughs> I'm totally kidding too. My basketball career ended quite a while ago. <laughs> so I want to talk to you about Berkeley College of Music. I yeah. know you were only there for a short time because. Mm -hmm dropped out after you spoke to Brian McKnight. But can you tell me a little bit about your time at Berkeley? Oh, man, I love it. It was it was really, I went to school for about a year and half a semester. And even after that half a semester, I stuck around for almost another year. So I was there for about two years, at least around mm -hmm. uh, Berkeley. It was l really two of the best years of my life as far as you know, I grew up in the Berkshires in Massachusetts, and there's a ton of music. But when I grew up, I was kind of a, a lone uh, wolf in the fact that I, I just closed myself in my room all day long and played piano and played music or, or, or whatever. So to go to Berkeley where everyone grew up just like I did or mm -hmm. or differently, but music was always the in the forefront of what they did. <laughs> it's the best. Um, we, I mean, just the, the late night sessions that started at 4 a.m. and then you had class at 9 a.m. and you go straight yeah. from there to class or you go to IHOP real quick, which was a quick walk away. Yeah. It was the best. There was, it's not your typical college where it's just party, 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 frats. And it's, it's really just our fraternity and sorority was let's get together and play music and let's just, let's go write a song and record it tomorrow because we can, because we have all these amazing facilities and studios and everything. So it was, it was pretty awesome. I loved it, absolutely loved it. I, I would have loved to have finished, but you know, you go there to have the career and I had that opportunity with Brian McKnight that I had to take. Yeah, yeah. I think it's so cool how Berkeley is able to take these people all over the US, all over the world. The world, yeah. Put you in these rooms and scenarios where you're it's able the best. to jam out and stuff. And the teachers have all, most of them have been in the business, have been doing it their whole life. So you're, you're just learning all this stuff in different perspectives. I had a couple of different voice teachers just to get, you know, this guy's perspective and this, this uh, classic uh, opera singer's perspective. It, it was pretty awesome, just the way that all worked out. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So do you ever go back to Berkeley and like visit and visit your teachers or just see yeah. what they like? I do. I did a master class a few years ago in Livingston Taylor's class, James Taylor's brother, and it was on songwriting. I played a couple songs and chatted with the with the students. It was so awesome. And they're so the students are so they're better, like they're just getting better and better. It's so awesome to see. Yeah. Uh, and then every time I go back to Boston, I always try to make sure that I go to Berkeley, walk or at least just walk around the, uh, mm -hmm. the campus and, and relive some of those memories because the memories, they just come flying slap me in the face every time I'm walking around those blocks. I played a, I did a concert 
uh, right before the pandemic with Indie IRE at mm -hmm. the Berkeley Performance Center. And it was just magical because the last time I was in the Berkeley Performance Center was when I was at Berkeley singing in the Singer Showcase. It was just, just the, the memories. Are, and I just walked around the crazy little halls and saw the tiny practice rooms. It's, it's the best, man. Berkeley's awesome. I had so much fun. And I love going back and recreating those memories. I go back and I listen to songs that were out at that time or that I loved just to kind of really bring, bring it all back. Yeah, because you're like, oh, I remember this song when I was yeah. in my school. Or I remember this yep. song sitting at the piano during yep. this class or during this. Yeah. That's cool because music could really take you back to a specific day and time. For or sure. Life. And then when you're walking around the campus and you're like seeing all the new, the new talent because the Berkeley fam and the Berkeley alum network, I just mm -hmm. think it's so unbelievable. You guys are so amazing and you embrace each other it's so cool it's there the the competition kind of there's there's always a little you know friendly competition but it, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a sorority fraternity it's just the, the band of, of of musicians getting together and we can it doesn't matter where you're from you know there were people there that didn't speak english but we would get together in a room and for hours and just communicate musically and it was the best yeah and that's cool because they don't know how to speak english but you're just like performing and jamming together and it's like the power nothing like it and that universal language that we all yep. have there's nothing like it it's the yeah. best that's why we all love music you know that's that's it what's up colleen coming to the show sunday yes oh, oh man i haven't seen her since i don't even remember unbelievable <laughs> awesome colleen <laughs> yes we will well i won't see you sunday but matt will see you sunday come come to the show let's go ash <laughs> ash <laughs> ashley are you they call you ash People call me Ashley, Ashley Live, Ash. I mean, whatever. A boogie. I, I what is it? A boogie. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Great. <laughs> I'll call you a boogie. <laughs> I love it. So I want to talk about songwriting. When did you first get into songwriting? Um, I think growing up, as much as I loved piano players and singers, and I always, man, I, I adore anybody that can sing and play. Yep. The thing that grabbed me the most is the songs that they were singing, I think. Yeah. And cause you can take a bad singer, sing a great song and it's awesome. You know, it's, it's amazing. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It's, um, I think I wrote my first song when I was like nine or 10. And you know, the first several songs you write are, you know, trash, they're terrible. They're, it's all learning, but you're, you're creating, which is I think brain strength, you know, strengthening that, that muscle in your brain. And uh, I, I think, in my brain, writing the songs was always more important to me than, than, the, than the singing and the playing, and which isn't true, because it's all, it's, all, it's all one real, you know, it's all a, uh, an everlasting circle of, of music. And I think, but the song, I don't know, I gravitate towards good songs, um, no matter what style, what it, do, it, what it doesn't matter. And I think when I started writing, when I actually found out I could, even if they were bad, when I actually found out I could write a song, I was like, I, I really enjoyed this and finish, you know, finishing the song is always hard, but when you do it, it's such a, you know, lovely, fresh breath of fresh air. And it, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's the best. There's nothing like my songs. A lot of the songs I write for myself are super duper personal. So it's almost like therapy to me as well. Yep. And being able to tell people things that they otherwise wouldn't have known about me. And, and I get a lot of, uh, you know, man, that song really helped me out that time and stuff like that, which is, the other reason why you do music. Yeah, I think the songwriting aspect and the journaling and the, hey, mm -hmm. I just out. And you're just like, yep. I'm just say words. And then yep. it helps somebody and they come up to you and say, Matt, yeah. this song means so much to me. It helped me get through a difficult time. It was there. It was like the hug that I needed. Right. And it's a totally different part of music and part of your brain and part of your heart. Like when you're, you know, sing, when you're creating it from nothing, it's, it's just, it's, I know amazing players that never wrote a song in their life. I know amazing song, so, singers or songwriters that have never sung a note in their life or played a note, but they're incredible at what they do. So I love the, I just love the camaraderie of the two things, you know, kind of bashing their heads together and, and seeing what, what comes out. Mm -hmm. So as far as songwriting goes, do you write every day? Uh, probably. Yeah. I, it, Cause you gotta, it, when, when I don't, do it for a couple of weeks. It takes me a minute to get back into it. Cause it, like it's, it's a muscle. It's like working out. Of um, and then not necessarily for me every day <laughs> I'm writing I'm for a few other artists right now. 
I'm writing for a couple of movies right now. So no matter what, what I'm doing, it's that muscles being trained for sure. And, mm-hmm. and it's, and it's, some of it is, is right for hire. Some of it is, okay, I need a song about this. Yeah. Some of it is I'm writing for another artist. So I ask them 400 questions to be like, okay, what can we write about? Yeah. Uh, and then I'm still, you know, just finishing up the final few songs on my record, um, my next record. So it's, yeah, I'm writing every day. It's a long winded <laughs> answer to say, yeah, I'm writing every day. I think it's important though, cause you're right. It is a muscle. So if you, only, sure. if you only wrote like once every two weeks, it's kind of like when you go to the gym and you're like, yeah, I want a six pack, but I'm only going to go like once a month. Right. And it's going to take a long time. Yeah. <laughs> right. you know, people for new year's they're like i want to lose 20 pounds and they're like and then they never end up going to the gym right right they'll go the first like week or two exactly but then it's not fun anymore so (laughs) no i think it's you need to be consistent with what you're doing and when you do it every day it just becomes habit it's like yeah i'm just gonna write today exactly yeah you get it yeah yeah so what advice would you give to other songwriters uh, I think, well, first of all, that muscle of writing every day. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a long time where I was writing, just jotting down, like I would sit at my desk, look at something and write about it. Like I would see this mug right here that I have here and I would write about the mug for 10, 15 minutes straight. Yeah. Um, I, I think stuff like that is, is really important. But the biggest thing is the, the, the beauty about songwriting is, is anybody can write, uh, you know, try to write a song that, that in, I don't even know how to say this. Basically what I'm trying to say is, is do you, because mm-hmm. uh, there, was, there was times where I wanted to, oh, I'm gonna make an album like this person, or I gotta write a song like this, and that's fine, that's great, that's also a great exercise. But then a friend of mine told me, yeah, but also do you, because nobody else does what you do. And if we all tried to write like this person, there'd be a lot of similar songs going on out there. Yeah. So I think the, I think the, the, the fun thing and the, u- the unique thing about each songwriter is everybody writes a little differently. It's like snowflakes. There's no two that are similar. And every time I co-write with somebody, it's awesome to see what their process is and how I can help bring their song to life. Yeah, I think the collaboration aspect is really cool, right? Because you see it one way, they see it another, then you kind of get in the studio and you're like, oh, what do you think of this? Yeah. Or maybe yeah. it's this way yep i think two brains are always better than one you know and and sometimes you get inspired and the song just comes out yeah but when when you collaborate with somebody to get that fresh perspective Mm -hmm. even if it's something you don't like or don't agree with it's just like but that's awesome that you would go there that's really great that you would go there yeah i can only imagine what it's like collaborating in the studio and just like ideas off of 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 other people like whether it's a producer or an engineer or like like a oh absolutely yeah, absolutely. And, and sometimes it doesn't work out, which is cool, too. Like, sometimes you write the worst song you've ever heard. And that's okay. Like, that's happens because somebody one, either somebody's gonna like that or two, it was it was it was exercise. Like Brandon just said, no one can do you better than you. Exactly. You need to lo- lo- lean into what makes you you because mm-hmm. you want to sound like Stevie Wonder, like, obviously, we can because Stevie is right. Un- I would right. take that if I could. But yeah, nobody can sound like Stevie. <laughs> I know you would, yeah. but yeah, we don't want everyone sounding like Stevie, like right. what you love and what speaks to you because like that authenticity within your music mm-hmm. is so, and when you're doing you and you're having fun with people. Yeah, really- exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and it's okay if pe- you're going to write songs that people don't like, it's just inevitable. Yeah. So do you, and, and you're going to touch a lot of people if, if they can tell it's really coming from you. Mm-hmm. How about the songwriting process? Like how is your song? I miss Q, sorry. <laughs> Hi, George. I'm more, I, George is the best. How Sorry, has go. <laughs> evolved over time. Um, I think I just I just know know the the process of it more. When you're starting, you know, there are a lot of the things I would do. I just be you know plucking things in the dark, figuring yeah. does this work? Does this work? And now I know more what might work or what somebody might want to hear. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh. In collaborating, I remember the first couple of collaborations I did, they just didn't work out because we were just button heads. And I was like, I don't like that. Yeah. And you, but that's not how you do it now. You have to be like, all right, let's do that. And then yeah. can we go here for the bridge or here for something else? It took me a while to, to become a good co-writer. Um, <laughs> when I was in my early 20s, it just, I didn't understand it yeah. uh, fully. But n- now it's, I'm obsessed with it. It's my, it's my favorite thing to do. So I think I just... I just know the process a little more depending on somebody I'm writing for 
Same. I think uh, I think it, it it's you just you pull certain things that you've done in the past or it's it can be a little quicker at times depending on what you're doing. I think it's just it's just an ever evolving. It's a lifetime of learning and a lifetime of there's no perfecting it. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe there is, um, but it's just it's 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 unique and it's it's. Uh, everybody's different. So I think it's just, I just, you just grow and you try to write a better song than you wrote yesterday. Mm -hmm. And continuously learning. Cause right. You might be working with somebody new that you might not know. Right. All the time, all the time. Uh -huh. uh, but it's, but it's just, it's, and it's letting them, when I write with other artists, I like them to be them and like them to, and I just kind of, you know, make it, uh, make it easier for them, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So last time you and I chatted, you were telling me about Brian McKnight, how you met him during mm -hmm. your time, how you dropped out, but how you went to LA for about a month to write with him. Like mm -hmm. you were you all the time writing with him. Mm -hmm. I heard that these songs are in a vault somewhere. Are they ever going to like come <laughs> out of the vault or are they going to be like in the Prince vault? There is one vault. Um, there's one song, sorry, not one vault, one song out of the few that we've written that keeps on coming up and, 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 and like somebody will say, I heard that song you wrote with Brian. I wanted, they, they almost put it on that record or Brian almost released it. Yeah. Uh, it might be, I mean, at this point it's, it's, it's pretty dated. So at this point, I think they're in the vault. Yeah. I'll maybe from one of my two songs, I'll sing a piece of one. Um, yeah. If I can remember it, I'll have to try to. Um, funny that you say that Ali van 26, uh, was a dear friend of mine, a girl I dated when all that Brian McKnight stuff went down, another amazing singer you might want to check out. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah. it all, it, it uh, yeah, it was, she was there for the whole thing. Hi, Allison. <laughs> yeah, she was at the right time as soon as we were talking about Brian. And she probably just left like, don't talk about me. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the cool thing is when you write these songs, right? Like you might, you might write 25 songs and only like, six or seven might be released mm -hmm. right and it's like yeah. like i even said prince because we know prince wrote all oh these it's insane like, yeah can you yeah. imagine going in that vault and listening to all that old prince music it would be a dream come true and i think the same thing with i have you know two hundred between 100 and 200 songs that nobody will ever hear uh some yeah. of them completely finished uh yeah. some of them are just ideas uh brian mcknight when i worked with him he played me 15 songs. I was like, there's my album, 15 songs. They're amazing. Nobody's yeah. ever heard those songs. Uh, wow. So yeah, and, and it's, it's, you got to keep writing because you're not going to hear everything everybody, everybody wrote. You know, we haven't, I don't think we've heard all of Shakespeare's writings. You know, I don't, there, there's, there, there's just too much coming out of you all the time. Exactly. To, uh, to, 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 for everybody to hear everything. Mm -hmm. Click photo says that breaks my heart. Yeah. That's my dude, Sydney. Sydney shot my photo for my only human single. And uh, Sydney, I'll play him for you. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll send him. I'll send you a bunch. I'll send you a bunch. You'll get so tired of me within an hour that you won't even buy my next record. Probably <laughs> not. I don't know. There's a lot of bad stuff in my archives as well, I'm sure. So, so Matt. Mm -hmm. You have so many incredible experiences of your musical career. You've played with Stevie Wonder, Brian McKnight, James Taylor, Christina Aguilera, like countless other people. I know I'm forgetting like so many of them, but is there like one moment in time where you're just like, that was it, like that made me? I don't know about made me. Um, like made my life complete. Right, right, right. I mean, playing with Stevie, playing with Stevie, playing with James Taylor. Yeah. Um, those were as good as, it, as good as it gets. I played with Stevie twice. I played with James Taylor three, four times. Yeah. Um, you grew up listening to these guys and they mold the musician I became. And to be on stage with them and James Taylor, we did one of my songs and he was playing and I was just like, this makes no sense at all. Oh, cool. um, it was crazy. So those two moments were, I keep coming back to those moments. Uh, more recently singing Say Something with Christina Aguilera, center stage, holding her hand and looking into her eyes and trembling as I did it. Um, <laughs> like, like voice shaky and, and everything in front of thousands of people. That right. moment really, it's, there's, there's a whole, it's, it's, a, it's a whole mess of moments that kind of, 
you know, if, if, if your life is this, these moments just point out like crazy. And I always come back to them and I always trip over them, you know, when speaking to somebody and I have to, and I can't wait to tell the story. There's a couple of stories I would love to write in short story form. Yeah. Uh, the first time I played with Brian, um, not when I met him and wrote with him, but when I played, uh, it was a show in Indiana when I played keys for him and it was surreal. The whole thing was surreal. And, uh, there's a lot of moments. I've been really lucky. Uh, the first time I heard my music on the radio or the first time I heard my music in a TV show, like that, those firsts uh, are, are stacked on each other uh, in my brain. And I always can go there and talk about them. They're, they're, the, they're the moments that define you, for real. Totally. Have you ever thought about writing a book like about your life? I think you've had a lot of very cool moments you know, I have, but I don't think I'd have the, the, I'd have to sit with somebody that can pull it out of me. Yeah. Um, the thought of sitting down and writing about myself sounds terrible. Uh, <laughs> I'd probably want to destroy myself when it was all said and done. Uh, I would love to, I would love to, even if it's like I said, in short story form, get some of these stories, you know, just written down, even if they're just for myself. I think uh, I think it's it's an important thing to do because memories do fade after a long time, you know, after a while. So I think that would be uh, I think it would be a good thing to do a memoir or something like that. Eh, I don't I don't think I'm confident enough that anybody would care. <laughs> I know I got neat stories and stuff, but people in the chat so mm -hmm. humble, great talent. That's Pat. Brandon says up, Matt, Pat? incredible. He really has no idea how incredible he is. Uh, El Capital says, "Yeah, good stories though." Sydney says, I got you, brother. So, like, everyone kind of wants to help all you right. write the book. <laughs> We're doing it. We're doing it. All right. Let's all – let's have a group chat after this, and we can all start writing some stories. I'll tell you all the words, and you write Sorry, them down. A good writer in here. <laughs> right? Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. It's – it's man, I would love to. I always think about it. I just yeah. – I have – I guess I – you know what? There's no ending to my book yet, and that not that it needs to be, because a lot of people can write, you know, a book a year, a book every couple of years. But I don't feel like I have a button yet on it, if yeah. that makes sense. I don't, I, I don't, I wouldn't know, I would know where to start. I would know what stories to tell in the middle, mm -hmm. but I'm not satisfied enough, I think, for the ending yet. Yeah. Uh, musically, I'm satisfied, you know, in my home life and all that, but musically, I got way too much more to do. And I would love for, it'd be cool if those amazing stories diminished because more amazing stories happen and then I could just kind of. Right. So I think that might be it. Is, is there's no good ending yet. I want to I want to create some sort of ending yet. I mean, I'm still young and I got a long way to go, but work in progress. Exactly what Al Capitan said. Yes, work in progress. Because yeah, you you've had this really cool career, and I'm not saying we need to write it tomorrow. I'm just saying maybe right. you first like couple chapters, and then you someday go and another ten. yeah. Okay. Even if, even if it's a how to book or or because I've always wanted to do write a syllabus for the self. To fit the self, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the musician, what do, what do I do after I graduate from Berkeley? You know, that kind of thing. It's something to tell them, because I did it, uh, self-reliant musician. Yep. Uh, something that, okay, I can play guitar and I can sing, and I just graduated from college. What do I do now? Because I could go play in a bunch of bars, and I could yep. write songs and release stuff on TuneCore. But, yeah. you know, I would love to write, this is how I got here. Mm -hmm. And here's some steps that you can take. Every career is different. Everybody's journey is different. Yeah. But here's some steps that I took that were huge helps to me. Yeah, I think it would be really helpful because I feel like a lot of people are looking for <clears> that advice, <throat> which actually brings me to my next question. It's kind of like you knew what I was going to ask you. Mm -hmm. What did you give to other we're here. See, we're here. We're good like that. What was the question, though? You cut out a little bit. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, but what advice would you give to other musicians? Oh, just as in the writing thing, do you? Because we're all unique in that way. And growing up, I think I, I played everywhere, whether it was Starbucks or Sydney Opera House. I played everywhere I could because even if you're in front of two people, those two people could be lifelong fans or friends or, you know, whatever. Right. Uh, so I think... Um, don't be too don't be too proud to 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 take a, a a gig that you don't want really want to do and don't just keep you know keep pushing yourself you don't don't ever be satisfied with your level of 
what you learned in the past, however many years and where you are at now. Cause I've, I, uh, I'm constantly learning stuff on the piano every single day. I learned how to mix records over the last five to 10 years. And I'm constantly, that mixing is a whole nother lifetime I learned. Yeah. And uh, so, but I'm, I'm constantly learning something. You know, I want to be a one-stop shop and things like that. The better you get, the easier stuff like that is. The better you get, the easier, you know, three people at Starbucks will like you instead of one. <laughs> so I think it's all just keep, Keep, uh, keep learning, keep experimenting, and keep, keep uh, challenging yourself. I love a good challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think learning and challenging yourself is so important because there's always so much more to learn. And like you said, you would play at Starbucks if you needed to. Like, yeah. 100%. Get for free coffee. I'll need that <laughs> coffee. But yes, I feel like my lighting, this is terrible. I, mean, I feel like this is just, you look no, so you're wonderful. Good. You're good. Um, my desktop keeps changing and then it's dark and then all of a sudden you can't see me and then I look like I got, oh, anyways, no. carry on. No, we can, I can see you. I feel like everyone else okay, can good. see you. Like, I good. Am not, I'm not looking at the light. I'm just like, can I see him? I'm like, yeah, I can see you. Okay, good. As, as everybody said, and I, you know, 10 minutes ago, insecurities are, are <laughs> ramping up high for me these days. Yeah. So talk to me about what artists and genres of music you've been listening to lately. A lot of Christmas music over the last couple of weeks, uh, without question. I'll yeah. say this. I will say this. Uh, there is a trumpeter from Germany named Till Bronner. Okay. He is. See, now, why does my phone go dark if I'm on it? Anyways, um, uh, Till Bronner uh, has an arrangement of Silent Night. Uh, he has two arrangements. The one he did with the full orchestra. Mm -hmm. And he has a, uh, an arrangement with the full orchestra of... We wish you a Merry Christmas and joy to the world. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, two days ago, I was driving to a gig. And those two songs, I have to wait to listen to them until I'm by myself and in, a, and in, this, and in some sort of space that's okay for me to do that. I was driving to my gig in Hartford, and I played them for the first time this year. I usually start playing them in, you know, Halloween time. But I, I waited because I just, my, my brain, I'm exhausted. I have a one-year-old and 400 projects I'm working on. I listened to him and I was driving in the car sobbing like you wouldn't believe, like crying, like couldn't, couldn't catch my breath crying. And so wow. you, that, that's sort of the question you asked, but Till Bronner is my favorite trumpet player right now. His playing just blows me away. And his version of the, this orchestral version of these two songs, I've never heard anything like him. I think if I arranged and orchestrated these two songs, I would retire after that. That's how good I think they are. They, they, they're the ultimate arrangements of these songs. Like, like yeah. I'll always listen to Nat King Cole and Bing Crosby and all these guys sing these songs. But when I heard these, I just was blown away. Beyond that, um, listen to a lot of old stuff. A lot of Tribe Called Quest lately. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going through another Stevie phase. I go in and out of Stevie. Stevie is probably my favorite. Stevie and James Taylor, uh, probably my favorite. But I go, I go through phases where I just listen. I just can't stop listening. Um, I listen to a lot of Brazilian music. Uh, okay. I love Brazilian music. Uh, Javan, Catano Veloso, Gilberto Gil, all those guys. Mm -hmm. I, I try to sound fancy and pr do it with the accent when I say their names. It never, never <laughs> comes across that way. <laughs> it sounded okay to me. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, John Mayer's new record is cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, if, if I do the whole don't go dark on my phone, will I leave the conversation? I don't know. I mean, honestly, I, I didn't actually notice any kind of lighting difference. I think everybody else was fine with it. Too. I know. I, you, know how the, you know how it's been on for a minute and it sleeps? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's been happening. Just the past few minutes. Sorry. Um, no. uh, all good. You know, okay, good. Um, I listen to a lot of jazz. Huh? I, you know what? Mm -hmm. I feel like people in this chat, because everyone's very active right now, I feel like if we can't see you, people are going to say something. So, guys, if there's any lighting issue, please say something in the chat. Yeah, because for sure different on my end and on Matt's end. So just please, guys, I know you're in here, but just definitely. Like, the but only yeah. thing I'm scared of is if I start playing a song and I can't go to the phone to tap it to make sure it's still lit, it might oh. go dark. Yeah. That's my only fear. No, you're um, good. You no, know, literally, um, Pat's like, we would tell you. So you're okay, good. Great. I would tell okay, great. I'll tell you a couple other people would tell you. <laughs> great. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, I, I, I listen to everything. I just did a, a Billy Joel tribute show and I dove deep into Billy Joel. What a songwriter. Good oh, God. God, songwriter. Yeah. He's, the, he's one of the best ever. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, my listening, uh, because I have a one-year-old, I listen to a lot of whatever she wants to listen to lately. I don't get to listen to music anymore. Yeah. So, but the good thing is she, her favorite song on the planet right now is This Christmas by Tony Hathaway. Really? So, yeah, favorite, she goes to sleep with it on repeat every uh -huh. single night. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 I'm lucky for that one. Um, mm -hmm. She also likes Feist's one, two, three, four, tell me what, she loves that song. So, so far she's got decent taste in music. There are a couple, you know, puppy dog pal songs and stuff like that in there that, that, that's, uh, Honestly, I should have, that should have been my answer to your question. Yeah, I listen to children, kids music now. Kids music. No, yeah. but I think it's important, and I love asking people that question, because I feel like every month mm -hmm. you could tell me different music. Like, if I asked you too oh, much. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And it's cool, because then, like, other people are like, oh, Matt turned me on to this trumpeter guy from Germany. And, like, because mm -hmm. cool, guess what? Everybody that's in the chat right now was like, oh, my God, I'm going to check him out. And Till so, like, Bronner, Silent Night. You know what? You asked me to pin something and I totally forgot. I should pin that because Silent Night will make you weep yes. the way it makes me weep. I actually reached out to, the, to uh, yeah. the orchestrator of that, the conductor of that session. I reached out to her. She hit me back and she, told, and she was so sweet. Aww. Just, just Nan Schwartz is her name. Unbelievable <laughs> arranger and orchestrator conductor. Um, yeah, I feel like I, it's another thing. Like, we talk about him for the next half hour. Like, <laughs> unbelievable player in those two songs really just blow my mind yeah so how do you stay motivated <clears throat> being in the music industry it's such a crazy industry yeah it's easy to get discouraged and i do get discouraged constantly um yeah. you know it's weird because there's th th now we're gonna get i'll get deep real quick uh you reach a certain age and all the expectations that were put on you when you were 18 and 21 and 25 didn't come up didn't pan out the way that you know you expected when i was 20 i got my first record deal when i was 22 mm -hmm. and from 22 to 27 i had about four or five record deals every one of them either had a tragic ending or something just crazy went down uh, my a r got fired one of them and then they just decided it just fizzled out stuff like that well i had a a r uh, manager that passed away oh, and he was my only it's all it's all good um Thank you. Uh, but uh, it, it, so there's moments where I'm like, man, I failed. I, I wasn't what everybody thought I was going to be. I wasn't. And now looking back, I'm like, man, if I ever, if one of those records ever came through and I think I would have been a mess, to be honest with you, um, yeah. because the, because of the lack of control, because of the, I don't, I don't think I'm good with, when I went on tour with Christina Aguilera, I get some really, I got some really hateful tweets and I know that's Twitter and everybody gets hateful tweets on Twitter. Uh, yeah. I, the first time that happened, I couldn't deal with it. I went into like a depression. I was like, man, these people hate me. Wow. Uh, and it was only like, a, you know, 10 people that were, a, that were a little clan that decided to attack the new singer because he didn't sound like the last singer that they love. Mm, yeah. And I didn't handle that well. So I can't imagine being, you know, some of these people every day, it's yeah. just, get, it's, it's getting attacked. So I don't, I think there's a reason for all that happened to me in my twenties, mm -hmm. but um, uh, I think what keeps me motivated is the love for music, the the different sort of projects. Uh, like right now, I have going on. I'm writing. I just wrote for a Christmas Lifetime movie, and now I'm writing for a Summertime Lifetime movie. I uh, just uh, co-wrote a song for a play that's going up in the West End in the next few years in London. I uh, scored a commercial that I'm finishing up in the next couple of days. I I'm writing for a um, uh, 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 top a finalist for American Idol. I'm writing two or three songs for him. Cool. Uh, so and then finishing my stuff, my record. I think just the different things, the continual learning. It's always new, so mm -hmm. you never get bored. And and you know, somebody asked me for a classical arrangement, and I'm not a classical pianist, but I was like, of course. Let me let me figure out how to fake a classical pianist so that. I sound real and it, you know, I'm, I'm going to say yes and I'm going to take the challenge. And I think just that keeps me, keeps you going. Um, Cause it's so easy to get discouraged and I have way too many friends that have, are kind of fed up yeah. and I get it. I totally get it. And I'm, I support whatever they choose to do, but I think the, 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 you know, every time you're on a stage in front of different people, it's the best every, little things like that. Just, just keep it going. Totally. Yeah. And thank you for being so, so honest about that because 
I feel like every musician goes through it, but not a lot talk about it. And it's important to know like, oh yeah, I was down at this time and like something happened yeah. with people and, then, and people are in the chat are saying like, yeah, we can have a reason. And it truly does because mm -hmm. if YZ didn't happen, then you wouldn't be where you are now. Right, yeah, exactly. And, and I can't imagine the musician I would have been. I think right. if, if it happened in my, you know, when you're 18, you want to be f a famous musician. Exactly. I think it, if it happened when, at that point, I would have been more into fame and that thing, because yeah. that's addicting, than, yeah. than the music. And this way, I got to literally just hunker down, build a home studio, and, and do things my way, and take projects on that I could choose to take on, and, and write for everybody, every movie, every TV show, and write, do all these different things, learn how to mix. Now I'm mixing records. I'm yeah. mixing a show with my friend Brian Gallagher for Comedy Central right now. Very um, cool. So I think it's just a matter of, learn, like, I, like the advice I gave, keep learning, keep doing new things, keep challenging yourself, because that's what keeps it motivating. Yeah, that's so important. Yeah, always challenge yourself. Always, you know, figure out new things to do, because there's always different ways to be creative when it comes to Totally, totally. I stopped getting comments. What did I do? I'm sure I pressed something. Oh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry if I don't see your comments. Um, but anyways, yeah, it, it's, it's so easy. This, this music business will eat you up and spit you out and forget about you the next day. Yeah. So, you know, I'm prepared for that. If that ever, if I ever decide to stop, which I can't imagine, you know, we're not allowed to retire. Um, I think, uh, I think just the new, the new challenges and the new, the new, the new stuff, you know, that's the best word I could come up with. It's the stuff. It's awesome. And I yeah. love music. Yeah. Yeah. And I think when the passion's there, like people are like, oh, I want to, I want to be a musician because I want to make money. And it's like, no, yeah. you're in the wrong business. Like you yep. need it because you love it. Because if you chase yep. them, money, money doesn't just fall from the sky. Like you have to yeah. love it, love it. And then yep. the music comes and then it's just like, yeah. And like you said, you're writing for Lifetime and you're doing this and you're, you're doing that. And so you're, you have a lot of creative things that you're working on right yeah just keep just keep going and keep keep uh keep doing different things because if you get stuck in a rut you know you gotta try something new you gotta you know even if it's like teaching or something like that it's all music and it's all beautiful right yeah so when i had put my show in january i asked you this question and i told you earlier i wanted to ask you this question now because it's almost a year later mm -hmm. and your daughter is just getting older so she is how has your daughter inspired your music um well one i'm quicker because i have to be yeah that's not so much inspiration as you know <laughs> business tactics yeah. uh when we talked in january so january she was four months old yes. um and i was sleep deprived i'm still sleep deprived um, right. she's going through a bit of a regression now and, and uh -huh. she wakes up a couple hours a night three in the morning it's fun um <laughs> At this point, everything that I do, she's floating in the background of my mind. Everything I do is for her and my wife, and not just to support them, but uh, I did a show with Javier Colon the other day, um, the season one winner of The Voice, and he had his kids up to sing, and I had to get off stage and go backstage because I didn't play on that song. And I just started weeping. I've been crying a lot lately. Maybe it's the lack of sleep. Maybe it's the <laughs> love. I don't know. Probably a combination of the both. Um, but um, just to, like, I can't wait to see who she becomes and what she does. Like, I'm not rushing it because I love who she is now. She just started walking. She just started talking a little bit. She says, Mama, Dada, all the beautiful, adorable words. She's got the sweetest little voice. She loves music. And at first I thought, oh, well, she's every kid. But no, apparently everybody can like, no, 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 that, that's different. Like, and that's terrifying to me. <laughs> but at least I can hopefully help, help her along the way um, if that's what she decides to do. But she, every, I guess the only thing that, that changed, which is everything, is everything I do is for her now. Everything, every song I write, it's weird to think, but I say, I hope she likes this in 10 years or 20 years, 30 years. I hope she likes this song and she plays it someday. Yeah. Um, as well as the, the shallow part of it, the business, as well as supporting her and buying diapers. You know, I want to give her an amazing life. And that all ties into music. And 
you know, when I'm sitting here playing, like it happened when we were sound, sound checking, I was sitting here playing and she ran in as soon as I started yeah. playing the piano in her yeah. diaper. And you saw the smile on my face. Like she's, she's everything to me as exhausting as she is. She's absolutely my, my world is too small. She's my universe. She's my being. She's the reason why I breathe her, my wife. It's, it's, I'm a lucky, lucky, lucky dude, man. It's the music at this point is icing on the cake, the business, the opportunities. I always work my tail off for that, but it's, 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 it's extra. It's the extra wonderful stuff. Uh, but, but the, but the solid ground and the rock is my wife and my kid. My kid, it's so, so weird to say that a year later. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm more, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm more tired. She was a little easier at four months because you just hold them, you feed them, and you put them to bed. Yeah. Now it's you have to chase them and make sure she doesn't put that in her mouth and make sure she doesn't whack her head on that, and, uh. which she does. She bangs her head 15 times a day, and I'm, you know, I swear it's like she plays football. But uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's everything. Having a kid, I've already written a couple instrumental things for her. I started writing a song that I'm very proud of that I don't think will be on my next record because cause I, 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 I want to take my time and write this one when I'm feeling it. I've, I've got a verse and a chorus. I'll start writing the second verse maybe after the holidays. I want it to be slow because every little phase of her life, which is there's a new phase every week or two, uh, I find a new lyric. Yeah. So I think it's, uh, she's obviously, so that's the answer. She's changed my life, everything, every, everything. Not just music, everything has changed. And yeah. for the better. It's every, she's everything. Yes. You know, next time you're on my show, I'm going to ask you the question again. And then we're just, I'm just going to have like, I'm going to be like, oh my God, she's so annoying. She <laughs> won't shut up. And she just goes on these dates. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, she's the best. She's the best. And, and the smartest she gets as far as talking and walking, it's just getting fun. And she's so funny. She's hilarious. Yeah. 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 I haven't um, laughed this hard in years. Yeah. Uh, no, she just the laughter is yeah, it's every every thirty seconds you're laughing at something she did. And that's I'm, that's good for my heart and soul. Yes, I think laughter in the, these past, I guess what what do you want to say, year and a half or so, laughter and happiness. Mm -hmm. And so it's amazing that she was able to bring all this out of you and kind of keep you distracted from like the reality and the craziness of what's going on in the world. For right? sure. And the, the and the one thing that really sucks about that is we want to do things with her, but we're so terrified of we, we had too many stories close to home with yep. babies. Yeah. Uh, so I, we've been really extra, extra, extra careful. Um, and as much as I want to take her into that store or go to this event or have her come to my show, she hasn't seen me play yet. Uh, you know what? I say, I take that back. She went to one outdoor show that I did in August, but. Yeah. She was. She didn't even pay attention. She started crying when she saw me on stage because I was way over there. And yeah, she's over here. Why are you over there? Do you, you know? So, yeah. uh, it's the pandemic has been great because I get to be around for everything, but really hard as far as you know, culturing her and showing her new things. Um, so we're trying to do as much of that as we can. We don't watch too much TV, so it's been hard. But mm -hmm. man, if this thing ever ends. I will take her all over the world with me for sure. Hopefully it will. Hopefully. I so hope so. I, I hope keep, so. There's, there's, there's surges in these areas now. I'm just like, it's, here we go again. You know? I know. It's crazy yep. because like here in New York, we have like a, a, a mask mandate that was just a whole mm. entire New York, which people are like in uproars about, which I think it's kind of good because it's going crazy in New York. I, I don't leave my front door without a mask. I don't care if I'm outside with a kid. I, there's, we've come, I, the three of us have come too far without and not getting it to get it now. So I, I, I wore it on stage the other night. I, unless I sing, I pull it down to sing real quick and I put it back on because yeah. it's just, it's just not, not a chance I want to take. Yeah, no, I completely agree. So how have you been coping with, I guess, the past year? I mean, you, you've been on tour. Uh, a little bit, a little bit, yeah. A little bit about that and just, I guess, the ups and downs of the pandemic, how you've been dealing with that. Um, I've been lucky because I've been working uh, studio-wise in, like, the movies and the TV shows and stuff like that uh, since the thing began. Yeah. I've been crazy lucky. Uh, mm -hmm. The amount of work has been insane. Um, I did miss playing, but I got back to playing in August and mm -hmm. Megan Hilty, I did a bunch of shows with her. 
and a couple other things, uh, solo things and all that. It was so good to be back on stage, but in the back of my head is always, man, I hope I'm not spitting when I sing and this person in the front row is getting my, you know, my, my stuff. And uh, yeah, it's just, there's always a tinge of risk. Obviously it's all a risk when you, when you go inside with a group of, of you know, a hundred people or whatever. Yeah. So it, it's, I feel like it's hard for me to perform at my best when that's always on my brain. Mm -hmm. But so that's been a little tough, but you work through it. And once you start singing and playing, it just kind of, you get lost in the music, but right. I can't, you know, there's been hard times, of course. Of course. Um, I just, like I said, I feel bad for my daughter that she's not seeing much. She, she knows me, my wife, my, and some of my family. She hasn't met my wife's family yet, which is terrible. So that part of it has been rough. But work-wise, I've been really lucky. And, and the good thing about, there's no good thing about the pandemic, but the, the good thing about the quarantine is, was a lot of people wanted to record, and they called me. So. Yeah. Oh, and for different things. Hey, can you play on this? Can you sing? Can you write this? Can you produce this? So it's, it's been good in that sense. But mm -hmm. I'm ready for it to end. I think we all are. Yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah, because was it when it first happened? It was like, oh, is this going to be like two, three months? And then it was like, oh, no, now right. we can't go for the holidays. And now it's kind of like, oh, well, it's more now we're <laughs> Right. So I don't even navigate this. And when, yeah. is, when is it over? Yeah. And I have friends that are, that have, found out today and yesterday that they have COVID and they can't go yeah. to Christmas with their families now. Like it's just, it's still here and yeah. very much alive. And yeah. that's why we're just being extra crazy about it. Yeah. And I think, and I think it's important to be crazy about it because, you know, you think of your loved ones and, and your mm -hmm. daughter, the family. Yep. Just, and this is how it will end if we're all a little crazy about it, I think. Yeah. You know, exactly. All, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So let's talk about what's coming up with you. Um, Great. No, you have a single coming January 14th. Yes, I'm very excited about that. Um, so it is, I've been a huge fan of Marie Dahlstrom for a long time. She's a phenomenal artist, singer, songwriter from the U. She's from, I believe, Denmark, and she lives in London now. Mm -hmm. Also just had a baby, uh, who's the cutest thing I've ever seen besides mine, of course. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, is that a thing? Do you do that now? Do we compare cuteness? I don't know. Uh, everyone's cute. <laughs> yeah, everyone's cute. Everyone's cute. Her baby is stunning. And uh, her and her boyfriend are stunning. Uh, but anyway, she's amazing. And I've always wanted to work with her. And I sent her a track at the beginning of the pandemic. and She loved it. And I said, this is the melody I got for, for a first verse. Yeah. And she came back with a chorus, her second verse. And like, oh, like, like she demoed it. So it was almost done. And then I wrote the bridge like that. So we wrote it fairly quickly, um, changed things over, you know, in the following months after that. And we recorded it up. It took us a while because she was finishing an EP and I was doing all, you know, hundreds of other things. And, but we finished it and it just came out. I'm so happy with the way it came out. And um, yeah, it's, it's coming. I think you can, we pre-order it on New Year's Eve. Awesome. Uh, you can pre-save it now. I believe you can pre-save it now. I don't really know how that works either. It's like I'm 100 years old and technology is new. I still yeah. haven't joined Spotify. I still buy songs on iTunes. Really? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. I still buy songs. I still spend hundreds of dollars a month buying songs on iTunes. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's coming out January 14th. I'm so excited about it. Uh, we will shoot some sort of video at some point. There will be lyric videos and all that stuff. And yeah, I'm very excited about that. And hopefully after that, an album, a couple of months, few months after that, the album will, will be finished. I have the music to put an album out, but I'm waiting on a couple more songs to, to, to finish up and then we can figure it out. Good stuff. Well, when the album definitely drops, you and I have to reconnect. We're going to talk about this. Let's go. Let's go. I would love to. The album is, um, it's a very, a lot of collaborations, a lot of duets, a lot of uh, instrumental uh, it's, 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 I love the way it's coming out. It's a little bit of everything. It probably should have been my second record. Yeah. Um, because it's a, it's an expansion of that. It's a, it's a more R and B soul jazz, a lot of thick, thick, thick harmonies. I have one, two, two, maybe three acapella songs, just all, you know, take six out kind of thing. Jacob Collier out. Cool. Um, so I'm very excited about it. I can't wait for people to hear it. And a couple songs will, that won't go on it. We'll we'll do an EP a few months after the album drops, and you know, just continuing to put music out. Yes. Oh, I love it. And then Sunday, 
What's going on Sunday? Sunday, uh, I haven't played in my hometown where I grew up, born and raised uh, in a very long time. I grew up in the Berkshires in Massachusetts. Yeah. And I used to do a show every Christmas, you know, around Christmas time. Um, I used to bring bands and bring special guests. And, and, and uh, this time we're keeping it chill. I'm doing a tiny little venue that only seats about 50 people. It's called the Gateways in Lenox, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. I think it's three, three fourths sold. Um, okay. So if there's anybody from the area that wants to buy tickets, get them quickly. Um, and it's just going to be, I hope, a relaxing holiday feel good mm -hmm. just me and piano you know let's talk let's chat let's pretend we're hanging out in my living room playing piano and singing kind of show awesome That's yeah awesome. so guys if you're in the area sunday go to the show tell people where they yep. can give all the deets right now let me let me look because <laughs> i don't know anything about myself <laughs> uh, it's at the gateways uh here we go here's the info the gateways in Lenox, Massachusetts, you have to be vaccinated or negative COVID test within 72 hours. It's six o'clock show, good and early. We can get home for the Celtic game. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can get tickets at, I think if you go, I don't know, I'll, I'll put it on my website or something. Uh, but if you go to gateways or something, just Google it and it'll, it'll be, uh, they'll be there. Oh wait, get tickets, hold on, get tickets gateways.tickets and it's a big long address so uh i posted about it i'll i'll make a post about it at okay, some point guys, after yeah, sorry i uh, just, i'm terrible with this stuff after this po do a post and, and you want me to write a book <laughs> <laughs> love it i love it sorry what were you gonna say no i was gonna say just after this interview post about it and just I will. go to the link after i well, will put i will put it in my stories right away yes beautiful so that's all the questions i have for you this evening but you're going to sing for us. I'm going to try. So we're going to call this extra quiet because the baby's sleeping. And if I wake her up, this interview will be over very quickly because uh, I'd have to go run and grab her. Um, can you hear that? Yeah. Um, so uh, I got to make sure not to stand up too tall because I have pajama bottoms on. That's what we all do now, right? I assume you have pajamas on on the bottom half of you. Yeah. Um, of course. Um, <laughs> I was doing, um, I also, I have a Christmas show coming up Thursday. It's a private event. Mm -hmm. I'm just singing a few Christmas tunes um, for some people in Long Island. And this was one of the ones that they asked for. And I forgot, I didn't forget about it because I love Christmas music, mm -hmm. but it never struck me as like Christmas songs. What are you doing New Year's Eve? Yeah. And I learned it and I figured maybe that would be a nice little, little ditty to do here. And I will probably screw it up. Cause like I said, I just, I just kind of learned it. Um, but this could be also practice for me. See time, time management. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to shout out during if, if, if my voice is too loud or whatever, but it's going to be quiet. So. Maybe it's much too early in the game. Ah, oh, but I thought I'd ask you just the same. What are you doing, New Year's? New Year's Eve. Wonder whose arms will hold you good and tight When it's exactly 12 o'clock at night Welcoming in the new year New Year's Maybe I'm crazy to suppose I'd ever be the one you chose out of a thousand invitations you'd receive. See, I'll belt that on Sunday. 
or uh, if I do this on Sunday and on Thursday, but it's you no know, baby. <laughs> oh, but in case I stand one little chance, here comes the jackpot. Question in advance. What are you doing, New Year? New Year's Eve. Oh, what are you doing, New Year's Eve? Like I said, that's actually the first time I've ever sang it from beginning to end. Really? Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had to look at the lyrics for a couple of thoughts. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Love it, guys. Give it up. So I just want to read a couple of these comments. Mm -hmm. Drew says, Sound like, sounds like Brian McKnight or, mm. or Brian McWhite, right? <laughs> Brian McWhite is what they used to call me or Quiet McKnight. How about that? Quiet McKnight. Oh, yeah. I love <laughs> that. That's a nice job. And then Sydney, I wanted to read this comment. I miss my friend's voice. You are an amazing mm. And we love you and your family so much. XOXO. Oh my God, that's so Sydney, stop. Sydney's always trying to make me weep in front of people, man. Sydney, you're, Sydney's the best. You can, but you can cry on my show. I've had people cry on my show and it's like amazing. I love it. So, okay, well, well I'll, I'll sing something real sad or something or just keep reading Sydney's quote over and over again. Whatever. <laughs> Mark's still got it. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, what's the next one? <laughs> you know, I wanted to do it. Yeah, no, I'll do it. I don't know if I'll be able to do the whole thing because the bridge gets real big and, and loud and, and, and all that. I'll give you a little piece of a new tune that's going on the next record. Um, sneak peek. Is, uh, yeah, a little sneak peek. Uh, I'm so happy with the way this one came out too. It features um, Yulia Musealan on flute. She's a Russian flautist who is just, oh, like Till Browner blows my mind, makes you just, makes you want to be better. And mm -hmm. she, she, I would actually just play it for you if I could, but the, there's a lot of bass and thump in it. But uh, it's a song I wrote for my wife about dealing with a musician, <laughs> basically. Yeah. I've written a few of those for her. But yeah. this one is more, um, it's called She Don't Mind. You know, I won't even talk about it. I'll just sing a piece of it for you. Um, let me lower these guys. She don't mind the struggles we've been through. Cause every time I break, she's always there to say it's all right. It's all a part of life. She takes me by the hand and makes me smile again. And we don't know. When the sky will fall But no need to run, no need to hide I finally got it right At this time I can see a better me I never knew Little piece of it Ooh, love Little it Little piece of it, thank you Thank you very much I would love to play it for you But I feel like it You know what, you want to hear just a dab of it? Yes, of course Would that be weird? Uh, no, I mean, you can do whatever you want on my show, so. Here you go. Yeah, here's just a little tiny piece of it. I got lowered volume a ton. Okay. See, like, that was really, really loud. Let's try that again. <laughs> there we go. Can you hear that? Yeah. The flautist. She's just, she's an angel. You get the idea, real groovy, old school. Wow, I'm really close to the thing. Uh, <laughs> I'll get into the chorus real quick. She 
So there you go. Yes. Little, little piece, never heard before. Love that. You actually sound like Kem on that a little bit. I love him. Amazing. I, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, he's phenomenal. Thank you oh. very much. Yeah, it's got an old school. Uh, the guy that mastered that track said it had a really cool Silk Sonic vibe, who I'm totally digging oh. right now. Yes, so, we oh, killer. I, I, so I played with Anderson Pac right, yeah. before the, uh, right before the pandemic, and he was just phenomenal to play with. Um, yeah. So much fun. His voice is incredible. His playing is surreal. So that was a treat. Yeah. When you join Voices with Bruno, I mean, it's got to be good. Of course it's going to be good. With the way Bruno sings and, like, yeah. that two talented dudes getting together, it's that whole yeah. thing. It's just people getting together and making music, and it's beautiful. Definitely. Yeah. I remember when they came together and I was like, oh my gosh, they're going to really use it. Cause both of them individually are insane. Crazy. Yep. Yep. And they're when, they're the best of the best right now. Yeah. Yeah. And then when they, they did all the award shows, they released mm -hmm. the album. Oh my gosh, we need more music like this. Like this is so feel good, fun, R&B. Yep. yep. Groovy. Like, yeah. Love it. It's just so amazing. I got you. Hopefully I got, I got a couple of those on the next one. The, one of the reasons why I'm holding the record up is because uh, I did a track for Earth, Wind, and Fire mm. that they liked, but they didn't pick. So I was like, oh, I got to keep this for myself. And we're writing to that now. And I really love it. And it's very similar vibe, old school, a lot of chord changes, a lot of music to it. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why the album's getting held up a little bit, because I have to finish the song. Whoa. Okay. So did Earth, Wind, and Fire reach out and say, hey, we have this thing? Uh, uh, somebody from their camp reached out and said, I need some, some tracks. And I gave them a few. They liked a couple. I don't know if, I, who knows? I mean, Earth, Wind, and Fire. They don't need Matt Keese on tracks. But hopefully they pick one. But if not, no big deal. I'll use them or somebody else will use them, you know? Yeah. Uh, if so, they, yeah. If yours, you have to let me know. I'm a huge Earth, Wind, and Fire song. Like, oh, I me too so 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 much that like if they, if they place them anywhere like in an album or wherever oh i'll definitely let you know please let me know please yeah let for me. sure i i i mean i'm sure it's a long shot but you know the guy that i know is is in the group so we'll see very cool yeah, like so, i said if not i'm, I'm gonna use them for myself <laughs> like they're great i like the way they came out so i'm definitely yeah. gonna use them you will so, hear them so awesome well that's all the questions i have for you but do you want to take some questions for from the people in the room sure Beautiful. Okay, so if you're in the room right now, feel free to ask any question you want. He said anything is fair game. Anything at all. I got to find out why I'm not getting comments. I can't see anything. You'll just read them to me, right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, sometimes comments show up and sometimes they don't. Yeah, it's um, not coming through for some reason. Yeah. Gabe says Matt is the GOAT. He sure is. <laughs> Gabe who? Which Gabe, Gabe is that? Gabe Kanda. Oh. Okay, can we talk about him for a minute? Yes. <laughs> Gabe is another guy you need on your show. Gabe is, I'm actually, he probably, I, I think I told him this, but he doesn't know it. He's going to sing bass on one of my acapella songs on my next record. Gabe, I, I just put you on the spot. Um, uh, Gabe I, is in an amazing group called King's Return that I've worked with a couple times. If you go to my page or their page, uh, Gabe, put your King's Return page up in here so people can follow you guys. They're freaking amazing. Yeah. And they're the greatest uh, four guys. Uh, Gabe and I have come to be really close over the last year. And um, I did an arrangement of How Deep Is Your Love by the Bee Gees for them. And that's on my page, their page. Yeah. And it, it kind of, Gabe hit me up after we posted. He's like, I think it went viral. It's got 500,000 views on Twitter and not this many on this. And so... It came out great. So we're going to work together on their next record, too, for a couple songs. I'm just so excited. Gabe is amazing. You have heard his voice on commercials. Uh, yeah. He's the, um, he's the uh, in a world where, you know, so and so. Like, he's that guy for these commercials. His voice, speaking voice, um, singing voice, just phenomenal. He's one of those dudes that just has that gift that is yeah. incredible. Oh, I love that. And it's at official King's return. And it's yes. In chat follow them they're amazing definitely so nickerson said can i venmo some money to get that new track early <laughs> <laughs> no kevin nickerson nickerson is an angel i will send that to you my friend i'll be honest if you want to dm me your email i will send you the new single how about that as long as you don't you know put it for sale anywhere or anything like that yeah oh gabe says you're making me cry 
Gabe, I'm telling you, man, Gabe, this has just been a cry fest from all of us. We're all crying. Oh. Uh, King's Return, man, they, watch out for them. We're, we're going to, they're going to do some really special things, whether I'm involved or not. They're going to do some really special things. Heck yeah. Love that. And I love that you shout other artists out. I think that's so important because the thing is, like, you've come in contact with so many people over the year, like, so many musicians and producers and songwriters and just, like, it's, it's so cool to hear. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I just love music. I love musicians. I love how different people are for me. Music. I love music man it's a beautiful yeah. community of art and and people who get way too competitive yeah I, it's, it shouldn't be about that I, i'm competitive with oh man did you hear that thing oscar peterson just played i gotta learn that i have to go learn that so i can be as good as he is at playing that song i'll never be as good as oscar peterson but yeah. I, I i think the 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 that's more inspiration than competition i think all musicians should just come together support each other i'm such a fan of these guys and 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 independent musicians and, and not independent musicians. I'm, I'm a fan and I, I love promoting people. I did a couple shows that I always have friends come up and sing and some people got angry at that. I was like, why? I'm like, no, no, no. You don't, don't come to my shows because I'm going to have people up and we're going to have fun and it's going to be, you know, something that you've never heard before, you know, and it's going to be great. Yeah. I think it's really cool when, you know, when they bring other people up because then you're like, oh, I love that keyboardist or oh, I love that. Right, right. Um, Cool, because then you can find out about people, and you're like, I never would have known that person. That's right. Different. Yeah, exactly. I love learning about new musicians from other people too. I think it's that's you got you got to support, man. It's, it's the Definitely. only reason we could stay we could stay doing this. Exactly. So on that note, please follow Matt on all streaming platforms. Matt, where can these beautiful people find you if they don't already follow? You? I am at Matt Cuson everywhere: uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I'm on Snapchat, but. Eh. Uh, I think I post once a month on that and nobody looks at it. Uh, I keep hearing I should join TikTok. I haven't gone there yet. Um, should. I, I should, should, but I just don't want another thing that's going to take up <laughs> my eyeball time. Listen, Matt, the thing with TikTok, mm -hmm. things that go viral are like eight to 10 second clips. You could literally mm. say, hey, I'm working on this clip or I'm working on this track. And then, mm -hmm. eight, you know, eight to 10 seconds is like nothing. It's just a snippet. And you're sure. like, Oh hey, you know this is the new song I premiered on Ashley's show. Gotcha. Like, okay. Boom. Like it, 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 the thing is, some people are like, "Oh, three minute pieces of contact." No, like it's literally like the shorter the better. Oh, good to know. A lyric is cool. Creative process is cool. I think you rock it on TikTok. Well, I'm on there. I just haven't done anything yet. So follow me on TikTok. Uh, eventually, maybe I'll start being more. I think once my next record comes out, once I'm done with some of these projects I'm working on, and the next record is done, yeah, I'll, I'll have more time to do stuff like that. Definitely, definitely. But yeah, at Matt Cuson, Matt Cuson, on, I'm on all the streaming, everything. They know. <laughs> yeah. Yes, guys, please, if you don't already, please make sure to follow Matt. Support the music. If you're in town on Sunday, please go yeah. to the show that he's having. The new single is dropping January 14th. So excited to hear this. Can't wait. Yep, it's coming. So, it's coming. So, so excited to hear this. And do you have any final words for the room, Matt? Just, just, uh, take care of yourself and take care of everybody else and love each other. I don't, it's corny. I, I, we're in such a weird place right now. I just love peace, music, happiness. I'm kind of a hippie in that sense. Just love each other. Take care of each other. Yes. Love each other. Support good music. Happy holidays. Always. You too. I, music. Don't keep it to yourself. Share the music. Put it on playlists. Buy the music. Buy the people that you love in your life. Music. Mm -hmm. for, whether that's merch, whether that's a vinyl. Yes. It's like support good music because yep. musicians really, 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 truly appreciate that. And if you have a musician that you love, reach out to them in a DM or share their content. It means more than you know. Yep. It really, like, honestly, the power of music and just telling people that you love Matt's new single that's coming out. Mm -hmm. world, right, it's Matt? Every, it's every, that, that's when you ask what motivated, that, that motivates me. When somebody oh. says, yo, that song is good. Like, that's all I need. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I, that's absolutely amazing. So, guys, please make sure to follow Matt in his journey. The new album is coming out next year. Like yes. I said, the single is coming out January 14th. It's going to be here before we know it. It is. It's a couple, couple weeks away. It's, it's time flies. Now, I have a kid. See how fast time goes. It's crazy. I, crazy. It's crazy. Crazy.
So Cassie, guys, you are the best. Thank you Aww, for thanks. always promoting musicians and, and calling me and, and thinking of me once in a while. You, you are awesome. Thank you for all you do because motivation right there. Really appreciate that. Like I said, this was episode 133. Matt was on episode Ooh. seven. Matt, you yeah. were on 37, which was on January. Wait, you said seven? No, you were on 37. 37. Okay. Okay. Unbelievable. Seven. It's crazy. 37 episode... 37, January 3rd, 2020, and now we're on 133. So guys, if you don't already know who I am, I'm That's actually, a lot of musicians, yeah. That's crazy, right? Yes, that's a lot of people you gotta check out. It's crazy, so guys, if you're looking for new music, follow me, I'm Ashley Live. This is Vibe with Ashley Live. If you love Matt and you're looking for more musicians to support, come on and join the party because we're always about love and supporting. Always, always. The Good stuff. Well, thanks so much. Thanks so much, Matt, for spending your Thank evening. Thank you, Ashley, so much. Happy holidays. Stay you safe. You too. You too. And much love. Post it on the new music. It's coming. It's coming. Okay. Thank you so much for everything you do. Of course. Thank you. Thank right. you. See Thank you guys. You. Bye.